Visit thegamekeys.co.uk for your MSP and PSN codes. Use Nick at checkout for an even bigger discount. What's up, boys, and welcome back to Leeds United Career Mode. Now, you smashed the like button on the last episode, so as promised, here is yet another episode the next day. Now, covering a few things off the bat, as you can see, most people wanted me to be in a shirt and tie, and I'm working on something pretty cool. I'm going to see if I can find a Leeds United tie with a nice crest on it. Bump up the style a little bit. Now, I figured out how to work the actual transfer list in terms of finding players it's glitched right now in the player search so you actually have to go by team and find the players you want it's really cool if you go on Google and just search shining stars in the Eredivisie or shining stars in the BPL or promising players in this area ah, it actually comes out with some really cool news reports that I think I might actually include in the videos later on in the series if I have time to edit them in but one of the guys that came up in my top players in the Eredivisie in terms of potential was a news article on Bilal Ul Sheikh so I'm actually gonna inquire about him see how expensive he is you guys know that I kind of want to try and put together a semi Dutch maybe English team in terms of Leeds United I want to stick to a core of English players I think that's what a lot of championship and BPL teams should do but just like any manager coming in I want to kind of put in the flair of players that I like or I'm used to working with quote unquote Rikero Zivkovic does not sound like a Dutch name at all but this guy I've heard actually has great potential now I know he's just arrived from FC Groningen but I'm gonna see if I can loan him out for the season maybe to buy a Another player that I want to steal is Victor Fisher. Now, if you guys have watched my past videos, you know that he's one of my favorite players to use in Ultimate Team 14, and I'm hoping that he can be as good in career mode for this year. I really want to get Memphis Depay, guys, but I think I'm going to have to take the risk and try and get him next year or the year after if we've been able to make a push into the BPL. And that actually ties into exactly what I wanted to talk to next, guys. I know a lot of people in the comments below are saying, Nick, do the financial takeover, do something like that, then you can get great players. I want this to be realistic, guys. I want to struggle. I want to try and find youth and build up leads kind of the way, well, not the way they are in real life, but kind of the way it would make sense. Now, if we make a push into the BPL, we do well, we've got a strong team, maybe we'll make it look realistic. Who knows? There might be a big money manager if that actually happened in real life. Leeds United have a great stadium, Ellen Road, tons of fan support. If they made a push and got promoted into the BPL, you never know. They might get rebought by someone who'd be willing to dump a ton of money into them. So we can look at that in terms of a financial takeover if and when I make it back into the Barclays Premier League. So Congolo, there's the man I wanted to inquire about. Now, Valentino Lazaro is another guy that I used in my Austrian team in Ultimate Team 14 and loved him. Him and Arnautovic were absolutely incredible. So I'm going to try and pick him up on the cheap if I can. If you know my channel, you know I love Kareem Rekic. Now he's on loan. I'm going to ask to scout him and see if we can try and pick him up. Now in an effort to bolster my defense, especially after getting rid of Sam Byram, a lot of people in the comments are like, dude, you just got rid of your best player. But I wanted to give myself an opportunity to put a spin on the Leeds United team. And yes, I kind of agree with you guys. I maybe shouldn't have let him go and definitely not for that cheap because it was Real Madrid. I think if I went for 5 million pounds or even 6 million pounds, they probably would have went for it. But hey, it's a learning process, guys. So let me inquire about him and see what type of player he is. If he can fit in the right back slot, I might look at Matt Target or James Bailey. Now, I know he does not have a face and a lot of people get a bit salty about that, but there's quite a few people in the comments below that said, hey, Nick, you know what? Go check this guy out. He's got great potential. So I'm not going to just go by the book and what everyone thinks is going to be a great potential or what the website says is a great potential, but sometimes I'm going to read the comments below and kind of pick out someone that a lot of people have said. He may be an investment for later. We can sell him on and get someone else. DeAndre Edlin, etc. In an effort to bolster my team of English players again, this is obviously a guy that everyone's talking about, both in the real world and in the game itself. So I'm going to inquire about him and just see if there's a way I can maybe sneak him out. I'm going to go with a cheeky low offer and see what comes out of it. Now, an English player that's showing a lot of promise is Patrick Roberts. And again, I would love to bolster the team of English players. So I'm going to see if I can snag him. He's shown great potential in this game as well. He's very happy at the club. He's not on much in terms of wages. So let's see if we can sneak him away from Fulham. So for now, Stefano Denzel, I think I'm going to just ignore. He's a bit too much. Munir El Alucci, again, is another guy I was interested in, but that's a pretty high value on him. So let's see if we can try and just push him a little bit lower. Again, 600,000 pounds is low, but there are a few players I'm trying to get rid of. Let's see if we can get Zach Thompson in on the deal and uh, sign him that would be a pretty good deal now here's something that's a bit disappointing so Bilal Ulshik is a guy that I did a lot of reading up on now 
And holy shit was I right. His price is insane. Now, I want to try and get him still again. So I'm going to offer something crazy low and see if we can get a player involved in as well. Come on, Twente, please. This is not a good deal for you, but I want you to take it anyways. Sadly, Victor Fisher seems to be a lot of money. I don't think there's any way we could approach him at all at this point. Ajax knows what a good player he is. Fine or disappointingly as well knows how good Terence Congolo is, but I really, really, really want this player. So I'm going to see if there's anything I can try and swing here. Now, this is an absolute long shot, but let's see what they come back at. You know what? Pierce and 3 million pounds. I think 11 million is a little steep. I think we could do well there. And as I should have expected, Kareem Rekic is not going to be moving because he was just loaned back out to PSV. So here's a massive surprise, guys. Zakaria Bakali, they're willing to let go for 650,000 pounds. That is it. Now, I know a lot of you guys are like, Nick, you know what? We all know he's good. Try and find someone else but come on boys 650,000 pounds the potential he has I'm gonna go a little bit lower and see if I can push it so Valentino's actually not as expensive as I was expecting him to be again I'm gonna push this a little bit and offer him and a few other players that I'm willing to sell off and the best surprise here 400,000 pounds for this kid are you kidding me I'm going to just go right in for it, boys. We're going to go with 290,000, maybe 80,000. See what they say to that. That will be a bargain. Okay, so James Ward-Prowse is far too important to them. So they've rejected it. James Bailey is not available, unfortunately, from Crew Alexandra. Recently moved, so that's too bad. But I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, Woo, great, a player that doesn't have a face won't get into the team. That's pretty cool. So they're basically saying that the offer is a bit too low in terms of me buying him at the end of his loan. They're are going to essentially not move forward. Now I'm wondering uh, if I bump this up just a little bit, can I basically eke them into making a deal here? So transfer offer accepted for Jordi Fluchels. Now he's on 1700. I'm going to keep on that. Let's give him a four year deal and he will probably be a squad rotation player to start with. So there we go. So I offered Twente 1.8 million. I think they valued him at 3.1 it was. Yeah, 3.1 and they're saying that they'll take 2.9 million. So I'm gonna wait on him because Mr. Roberts is another option at right mid and no one's got back to me from Fulham yet. And the deal of the transfer window is there, boys. Holy shit, 490,000 pounds they accepted. So let's give them a little bump. It's not gonna be much. I know you guys are gonna think that's really not important at all, but I'm gonna tell him he's a crucial first team player because he is, and let's see if he goes for it. So this is promising. Feyenoord's not interested in the player that I listed, but if I increase my offer, they might go for it. Now, I think Congolo could be one of the big transfers I make this year. So let's get rid of Pierce. We'll offer them 4 million. I'm still going to offer them a center back if I have one to work with. There we go. Scott Wooten. Let's see if that changes it up. I'm not sure this is going to be enough. And NAC Breda is not willing to sell. That's okay. So they've just said, we've reviewed my contract with Patrick Roberts. We can't accept your terms because the sum is too low. We believe he's worth more than that. Okay. Well, they rejected it. Now, does that mean uh, I can't try again? Let's let's give it another shot. Uh, I think he could be another promising talent. So let's go to 900. Now, I know you guys are thinking, wait, if other things work out, you're not going to have enough money. I'm hoping to sell other players too. So the transfer offer for Matt Target has been accepted at 280,000 pounds, boys. That's yet another fantastic deal. Again, I like to do this just to make the players think that they've got a little bit more going on. So he's going to be a crucial first team player as well. The replacement for Sam Byram. Okay, and you know what? I think I'm going to have to give up on Ward Prowse. They really don't want to sell him, so that's okay. I've got a pretty decent midfield, and Ajax are saying that the player that I wanted in terms of a backup striker is not available. All right, we'll have to move on. Jordi Fluchels has accepted the offer, so that's lovely. I'm hoping he will develop well. He's a good Belgian. And to make things worse, Feyenoord have just received an £8 million bid from Sevilla for Terence Congolo. Fuck off, Sevilla! And I'll give up on Bilal Ulshik, even though I really, really, really want this guy. 2.9 is just too much, and I don't have enough. I I did get Zakaria Bakali, so he's only 16. I'm gonna see how he's looking in January, and if I can snag him, then I'll do it. Now, friendlies, I think, are a bit of a waste of time in terms of me actually playing the game, so I'm gonna sim them. Let me get my basic B team set up. So as you can see right below me, there's the Leeds United first team for now, before the other players that I want have come in. There's the Leeds United B team, essentially the team
team I'll use for cup matches or friendlies like this coming up. So I'm going to select this team. So the idea that I have for simming matches and actually going into games, boys, is because I am a manager, I am not going to have my actual face cam on when we're simming matches and we're actually playing the game. So you're just going to see the full field or the kind of highlights that are going on. And I think that'll be pretty cool because you don't really want to see me. A manager you don't really see on the field, but you will kind of hear them on the touchline. Over the next few videos, that's how I'm going to do it. It's going to take quite a bit more editing to get it in there. And then you guys let me know over the next few videos if you like the concept. So sending the players onto the field. Come on, boys. Now, I know this is the B team. I trust in you guys. Let's see if we can get something good going on. All right, nothing going, nothing going. Looks like a pretty stale first 20 minutes. And there we go. And Tanu Gucci gets himself a first goal. That's fantastic. Yellow card for Austin. No surprise there. Oh my goodness. We got lucky in terms of that penalty. Oh shit. Ibrisic just got a tying goal. And Austin gets himself sent off. Thank you so much, sir. So what a great way to start the friendly. I think that's probably where we'll end. Not horrible. Not happy, obviously, with Austin getting a red card. But hey, it's the preseason. We're working out the kinks. And let's advance on. Now, I'm a little bit worried about that friendly with Inter. Maybe I'll test out my first team there. And there's the heartbreak with Terence Congolo. So they did accept the offer from Sevilla. And it looks like it's going to be even harder to get him next year. Damn. But that's football boys that's life we got to move on holy shit we're gonna get fucked over by Schalke we almost stole Zachary Bacali for nothing and here comes Schalke with a 5.5 million dude oh my god am I gonna get totally screwed here I have no idea and there you go the struggle is real boys now Cagliari is trying to get the guy that I want Matt Target is now saying I can't give him what he wants hmm Matt I wonder if it's just because you're not getting how much money that you hope to get and fuck now Ipswich is trying to swoop in and take Lazaro. If I don't do something about Zakaria Bakali, I think we're going to lose out on him. So I'm going to offer him essentially double what he's making right now and see if he'll make a move for that. There we go. Crucial first team player will resubmit the offer. Try and get him signed before they can push him to take another offer. Oh, and we got him, boys. We may have only paid 400000 for him or something like that. Just under 500000 But we almost lost out at a $5.5 million pound bid so i'm happy i bumped up his wages yes yes welcome to the team zacharia bakali well done boys well done Woo was freaking stressful man holy shit so in a friendly versus inter that's the first team we're gonna go with the big boys let's see how we do this isn't promising to me but don't tell the players i said that let's go boys away from home i don't know if i should really be simming this but hey i know that a lot of you guys tell me if i am not at home to make sure that i play all the games again it's a friendly i'm interested to see how the boys do especially against inter and holy shit adrian scored a goal come on boys let's go all right, Freddy Guarin with an injury. Sloth has taken off Zachariah Bacali. I don't know if that's a good thing so early in the game. Hernanez has tied it up. Oh, come on, boys. Against Inter, in terms of the team that they have, I can be happy about that. Well done, boys. And I think that's where we will end the episode, boys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like the concept of the series and where things are going, how I'm doing things. We've got a few players that are actually growing already, so that's fantastic. Now, Stephen Warnock, it's expected that he's to drop because of his age. As always, let me know down below if you're liking the series, if there's anything you want me to do better. Can we hit 2,000 likes again on this episode? guys and Zachariah Bacali is already going up in aggression not a bad thing 80 whites moving up as well that was a pretty damn crazy episode in my opinion guys a lot of ups and downs and I think that's what's going to make this series and this career mode really really awesome is the, all the worries the struggles the bullshit that I'm going to have to go through with the Leeds United team is going to be incredible so I love you all we'll catch you beauties on the flip side peace